Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nintendo Power Block, episode 184. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is that retro code, Eddie V. Where does Sonic 3 uh, was a Metroid gay? Hello, everybody. Well, Ed, I don't... <sighs> Joining us for the first time <laughs> from Secret Friends Unite co-op mode is Mark Carabin. Yay! The, Hello. The Canardy in it himself yes sir how's it going happy to be here that's going very well uh, I'm like I said happy to be here Re- really excited to be back on a Nintendo show yeah because uh, uh, I don't know you know because you used I, to do I had, a uh, warp whistle yes yeah. sir yeah my brother and I started uh, the warp whistle um, I think we hit like it would have been five years uh, a couple of weeks ago so we ended it last year. So we, you know we had a good four year run. But uh, I just got all those like little time hop things of like, hey, remember you know when you did this uh, five years ago? So that was that was kind of cool. But uh, it's it, you know, like I said, it's it, we ended it a year ago. I joined co op mode with Todd, and that's that's been great to talk about video games as a whole uh, and add to the secret friends family. But uh, it's it's so much fun to be back on just a Nintendo show because because that's that's kind of my first love. You know what I mean? It's uh, I love Xbox and PlayStation and everything else, just games in general. But uh, it's so nice to be just laser focused on Nintendo for a night. Yeah, I mean, that's yes. that's kind of, you know, where Ed and I started was this Nintendo, right? Like, I mean, we're approaching 200 episodes in a, probably two or three months. So, uh, you know, Amazing. it's it's uh We've had a we've had quite the run with this show as well, so it's. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, like you said, Nintendo is obviously our first love as well, and you know, I I think I found you guys through Todd at at one point, and I was I listened, you know, until until you guys were were done, so. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's always um, uh, it's always. I remember I remember the one time like I I wrote into you guys a couple times and you guys read my my Metroid multiplayer question. I was like, awesome. They read yes. it. That was a yeah. It was a highlight. Not gonna lie to you. It was a good time. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I uh, when I when I said I was doing this show, um, and I was I was like mentioning your names and stuff. My wife was like, "Oh, I know that name," because I had like talked about you uh, in the past and and I had listened to the the show and stuff like that. So um, she was like, "Yeah, no, I, I I like completely remember you mentioning those guys and that kind of stuff." So it was uh, yeah, it's 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 really cool to be here. It's it's really great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're we're happy to have you, and you know, I've we've interacted on Twitter a few times, and like obviously, yeah. you know, back and forth. But like, I think this is our first kind of like face-to-face interaction it's kind of it's, it's about time i think some people would say yeah so, so. yeah for sure uh all right we're gonna get into this housekeeping real quick and then we'll get into what we've been playing uh for those of you new here welcome to nintendo power block each and every week edward and i as well as our friends from around the internet come together to talk about the latest news rumors stories and games from the world of nintendo you can join us live on Mixer and Twitch on Monday nights, except for this week, it's Tuesday, or watch or listen on Thursdays on your podcast service of choice. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please rate and review the show. It helps with discoverability, helps us be found. It's kind of nice. Five stars. Yeah, those five stars. Anything less, just <laughs> tweet it, Ed, and tell him how wrong he is about arms, too. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Remember... You can subscribe to our family of podcasts on our website at bossrushgames.com slash subscribe or search Boss Rush Games on your podcast service. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mark, actually, why don't you tell us a little bit about co-op mode before we get into what we've been playing? I know uh, some people might not know what that is, but they should. Sure, yeah. Uh, so Secret Friends Unite uh, is... Uh, has been a podcast for a long time. So they, they cover kind of generally geeky news. They have a, a Facebook page and, and that's kind of where everything trickles down through. Uh, and the, the podcast is a, a kind of a spinoff from that page. And uh, so Todd and Charlie cover, like I said, just generally geeky stuff. So movies, news, TV shows, comic books, whatever, that kind of stuff. But Charlie hates video games. It's uh, always been a, a joy listening fan. to Charlie try to, talk about a video game it's it's always it's unless either, it's lego it's yeah, great it's either legos yeah. or spider-man or right yeah legos. he got into that <laughs> yeah pretty much uh so 
so uh, you know, I've I've been a big fan of theirs for for years, and uh, and knew Todd and played Destiny with Todd back in the day, and and you know, I always kind of interacted with those guys. And like I said, when when the Warp Whistle ended, I kind of still wanted, I, I kind of missed that podcasting thing, right? And uh, I originally pitched co-op mode as like a uh, uh, Canardian corner kind of thing, <laughs> like like a five minute segment that could be inserted into uh, secret friends unite, like the proper show. And, uh, and you know, Todd and I could go back and forth or I could give a little game review, just something tiny that could fit in the regular show. And uh, Todd liked it so much that we said, well, maybe let's do something once a month. And then it became something every two weeks. And now it's like an hour or more every two weeks. So it's it's really snowballed since. And and Todd, I think, loves the chance to talk about video games. So uh, co-op mode is a spinoff of Secret Friends. It's in the same feed. So if you're interested in uh, video games, comic books, all that kind of stuff, check out Secret Friends Unite and co-op mode. Uh, like I said, co-op mode's every two weeks. But uh, we, we have a lot of fun talking about video games. Uh, I think it's a nice escape, <laughs> escape for, for, uh, for Todd uh, to be able to geek out about some games a- instead of uh, listening to Charlie talk about cosplay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I listened to the last episode of Secret Friends and, and there was like... It was probably only about two or three minutes, but it sounded like a twenty-minute segment of of Charlie talking about <laughs> cosplaying as Indiana Jones. I was like, <laughs> right, right, yeah. I, I was actually just listening to that as I was walking my dog earlier. So yeah, that he was uh, he he for someone that cosplays as, as Indiana Jones, he really has some problems with that franchise. Uh, so it's kind of funny to hear that it's kind fair. of like. Oh, you know, I hate this and I hate that, and I, I can't believe they're doing another one. But I also, it's my most popular cosplay and like the character that I love. And it's like, what? what? <laughs> Make up your mind, Charlie. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's a fun show, man. We we just, uh, you know, it, it basically, like I said, it started with us just wanting to hang out with video games and it's it's snowballed from there and uh you know we've been having more guests on and uh, and and really kind of blowing it up this year after kind of finding our pace through the last year so it's uh, it's been great We're, we've been going for a full year now which is which is really exciting and, and went by very quickly yeah that, that year mark is always a. Uh... Uh, the, the year mark and the hundred episode mark is all, are always like the big yeah. two first milestones that you get really excited yeah. about. So, uh, Ed, yeah. and, Ed and I are coming up on what, five years, I think. And, uh, we're gonna, nice. we're gonna do a big episode 200 giveaway, but, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. So, but, uh, yeah, I love, I love co-op mode. I love, you know, I, I loved the warp whistle and I love secret friends. So, uh, I was actually going to be on secret friends yesterday and then Todd messaged me, and he's like, "Oh, I, I think I'm getting sick." And like today on Twitter, he's like, oh, oh, no. "I have the flu." I'm like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh no! So, uh, Todd, we love you. Hopefully, get well they'll soon. get you on very soon. I yeah. know. I've been trying. Yeah. I've, I've, you know, we've always like, we've been trying for probably three or four years at this point to get me on that show, and like, I'm either working or their schedules conflict, or you know, it's always been a schedule, and we finally did it. And then Todd gets sick, and it's like you know it's all, it's all right though we'll we'll figure it out one day it'll have to struggle someday uh so but you know mark since you're the guest uh are you playing anything interesting uh well for for people that listen to co-op mode they'll know that i'm a big Fortnite fan and probably talk about Fortnite a little too much for a show that's supposed to talk about all video games but i am very much enjoying chapter two season two of Fortnite. Um, I like the, the secret, um, secret agent kind of theme, which, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the James Bond series. And if they don't do a James Bond crossover with this season, I might just give up on the game altogether because that just seems like a wasted opportunity. I think know, especially because the new movie is coming out. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what right. I was about to say that when a new movie comes, they'll do a crossover. Yeah. They have to, they have to, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying that. I've been really back into rocket league as well. So I, I recently got the Rocket League, uh, what do you call that, Rocket Pass, and then the new Battle Pass. So it seems like my gaming is more and more uh, Battle Pass-centric, except for uh, I finally picked up Sonic and uh, Mario at the Olympics, the 2020 Olympics, just because all the Sonic games went on sale when the movie came out. Mm-hmm. And, 
Yeah, that, that's been more fun than I anticipated. I haven't played one of those games in ever, maybe, uh, <laughs> or at least a very long time. As, as uh, much as people <laughs> laugh at them, they sell very well, and people do yeah. enjoy them. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm, I'm very much enjoying even the story mode and the, the retro games versus the, the newer games and all that kind of stuff. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's been a fun little, fun little diversion from my usual shooting people in the face or driving rocket-powered soccer cars. So uh, yeah, yeah, those are the, the main ones. I've also been testing uh, xCloud a little bit now that it hit iOS, but this is a Nintendo show, so let's skip that. That's uh, I've, the, the big joke on... Uh on arsenal x is like uh ray got his like within a couple hours of of him signing up and and jesse obviously has a as a samsung phone so he got his you know way a long time ago got i'm still waiting on mine still waiting on my email. really yeah oh have, man yeah i, I uh, uh i yeah, saw i got mine hmm, i think i saw i saw ray and then i saw sean capri tweet about it and i was like oh i, I gotta do this so i I did it at work. I signed up for it at work. And uh, I, I came home. I'm like, you know what? It, 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 I'll get it. I'll get it. It's like three weeks. Still haven't gotten in. I'm like, oh, man. Oh. And then I, I did get a confirmation email that says, we'll email, email you within the next couple months for your <laughs> test pass. I'm like, oh, great. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, yeah, the, the 10,000 people person uh, number for the... the um, iOS test uh, seems seems a little weird, and I did speculate on co-op mode that I'm assuming I'm going to get kicked out, and everyone that's in right now is probably going to get kicked out because you can do that on test flight. Um, it's it's basically just a matter of turning off the accepted emails and turning on 10,000 new ones. So uh, I think it's an 80 day test or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they're going to change it up fairly often. And one of these days, I'm going to go to try to play Halo on my phone. And it's going to be like, Nah, bro, sorry, you're not in the test program anymore. <laughs> like you're done. Uh, so, Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm guessing it's going to work like that. So hopefully. Um, you know, I, I'd be happy to take that sacrifice and, and get myself kicked off the program if it meant you getting in. So uh, wow. hopefully they mix it up a little bit sometime soon. I mean, I've got enough games to, you know, waver my time on, <laughs> on the Switch. It's, I mean, Don't it's, we all? it's just like, oh, man, all my friends got in and I just have to sit here and listen to them talk about it. And, you know, it's just one right. of those things. Yeah. But obviously, honestly, like I would use it like a couple times maybe and then life gets busy and then you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot that that exists still. So. Yeah, I wouldn't use it at all. I, I, it's because you're a strange human being, Ed. You're the only person hey. that doesn't. You're the only person that does not believe in Game Pass. But we'll st- I say, like I said, Game Pass is a good butcher for those who want it. I do my gaming in a different way. I know. Can you help I, it, I, Ed? I just like to. I just like to give you a hard time. So, uh, <laughs> uh, is that is that pretty much it? Is that all you're playing, Mark? Just I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. What about you guys? Ed, what are you what are you playing? We'll go to you next, I guess, cuz uh I was going to save I was going to save something for uh, a couple weeks from now, but I think I'm going to talk about it tonight. So what- Okay. So, what I've been playing is Tokyo Mirage Session. Uh, I'm close to the end of the intermission. Uh, I'm about to start chapter 5. I got one more uh side story to do. Um, right now, I'm kind of, kind of like at level 51, um, and like I'm 39 hours in the game. So I'm just like, huh, I've really been playing this game for a long time, way past the 25-hour mark. Um, so uh, I think I'm probably going to get my characters up to level 70 or 80. Um, and then try to stay roll through the game. But really enjoying that. That's been... Um, my kind of my switch game uh before zelda breath of the wild i'll get to that soon um say also can i uh uh working more onto that uh there's some new powers that i still need to get like i just got a power that could allow me to double jump um and so i can't wait to use more of that um uh, in there, so I'm probably gonna finish that game by the weekend, um, because like I said, Tokyo Mirage Session is taking up all my time. Um, Snack World Gold Edition, I've been loving, cracking up, loving the writing. 
uh, with that. Uh, Dark Side of Genesis, uh, it's a gay. I, that's, <laughs> okay. I mean, I, dude, I mean, I, dude, I'm probably like three hours into Dark Side of Genesis, and it's like, I, I, we talked about this a little bit last week, but it's like, yeah. It's a series that I really, really want to love because the characters mm-hmm. are cool. Like the the art designs and stuff are cool. Like the the just the lore and like it, you know it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it also takes itself super seriously, which is what's hilarious about it. And like I just want those games to be better than okay. And every time I play mm-hmm. one, it is just okay. And it, I in Genesis, I was like, okay, smaller budget. It's forty dollars, not sixty. Going in with low expectations, right? Twin stick shooter. Strife seems okay. It's, it's still okay. It's just okay. <laughs> just, just okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Those, despite your feelings about Game Pass, are perfect Game Pass games. I know. I know. I, yeah, like, I, it's, it's, I mean, first of all, I, I do. I did download one and two off of Game Pass, but I also got them right. when like I I got them when they came to Switch, and then like what a month later they came to Game Pass. And yeah. I was like, oh, whatever. You know, I I do that all the time. I bought Kingdom Hearts like three weeks ago, Kingdom Hearts three because it was on sale, and then it came to Game Pass. So you know, what do I know? I'm glad someone else has the same curse as I do. I mean, it seems it seems that way every time. Every time. Hey, yeah. I, hey, I I want to play the new and latest if I could afford it. That's me. Um, <laughs> Devil May Cry three. Uh, it's okay. I thought it was gonna be something different, but once again, it's a Devil May Cry PS two game. I was um, gonna say that PS two like Devil PS2 May game. Cry game doesn't live up to your modern expectations of video games. <laughs> I I literally think DMC. I still say this: DMC Devil May Cry has ruined the series for me. I can't play. I can't That's really fair. get it. The combat is so good in DMC Devil May Cry and art style and story that anything else that Capcom has tried to do with the series doesn't even compare to that quality of level. Dude, I I'm just like this is not satisfying. This is kind of like okay, you you really are, yeah, it's a challenge, but there's no there's nothing to connect this game like i don't feel like i'm moving fast enough that i'm quick enough to pull them in dodging at the right time counter attacking just like ninja theory has took in devil may cry to a whole nother level that every time that even with devil may cry 5 i feel like they went back and nothing is like really exciting about it it's like they went back to it making it feel basic Instead of making you work and really challenging you with some styles and stuff. And I'm just like, man, DMC has like really ruined it. Not saying that Devil May Cry 3 is bad or anything, but it's, but I'm just like, I could play this like a PS2 game and be bored out my mind. Because there's no, there's really no kind of like uh, dial in combos. You know, I could change stuff up. I can, I can quickly, you know, switch moves if I need to. And it's just, it doesn't feel that way in this. Even with the new swordsman and trickster, like changing up the styles and stuff, it's just like I see what you guys are doing, uh, and it's cool. But it's just like, no, it's still a one button kind of basic feeling thing. You don't yeah. give me a light and a punch to alternate and really allow me to like be creative because like when i'm in a zone i want to keep that zone going and devil mm. may cry five i mean devil may cry three doesn't let me do it so it's not a bad game i, I will say that it's not a bad game it's fun the camera angles are still janky uh it's it, it it's a good seven seven point five if i had to rate it good three yoshi coins if i had to rate it it's not a bad game but like i said DMC Devil May Cry has like ruined the combat for me because it's so good. Nothing else in the series is on that level and will never be on that level of enjoyment. So, um, but that's pretty much what I've been playing. Um, I'm trying to finish up Tokyo and Kanai, and then I'll start Breath of the Wild. Um, 
Oh, I also played a little bit more Chess Shapes and Beats. Uh, getting further into that, I'm take, taking my time with it because I love the music. The um, music's so good. Sometimes, like, sometimes I turn on YouTube and just put the because there's people rip the playlist and put it on there, and then it yeah. gets flagged and you have to go look for it again. But uh, that music is really good, especially the Shovel Knight tracks they added to it. So yes, good. so good. So yeah, so that's kind of what I'm working on, just trying to get more of my backlog stuff done. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, once I get done with Tokyo, uh, I'm f- going full in the Breath of the Wild. Uh, right, you're gonna finish so it finish. finally. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be finish working on that game and finishing it. You know, every every episode you bring it up, I'm just gonna give you a hard time. <laughs> of course, <laughs> there, there's no there's... finish it just in time for the sequel. Yeah. All I can all I can say, Corey, is is that I just want you to see, if you see Edward V online and it says breath of the wild just give me a clap or something i'm not gonna believe i'm gonna <laughs> click that right stick for a clap uh, yes uh yeah for me i've been playing tokyo mirage sessions uh i'm only about three hours in i'm in this i'm i'm trying to like be really thorough so i'm in the i think like the second or third idosphere uh with the the doll dresses that kind of you have to use the buttons to lower and raise the arms yeah. to get to the different floors uh yeah i i like this game it's it's really simple i kind of like wish there was a little bit more of a challenge to it especially coming off a uh, uh fire emblem and then going into this and I'm like oh, man i mean i know they're two different games but this game is like really easy compared to oh, fire emblem. it ramps the difficulty is going to ramp up get ready <sighs> I don't know if I believe you, Ed. I, I kind of feel like this game is just going to be simple the whole way through. You don't, have to be- you don't have to believe me. I'm further than you. I'm telling you my experience. I'm it's going to ramp up. Uh, so I've been playing that, and then I've, I've also started a new playthrough on Fire Emblem. Uh, mostly because I'm going on vacation, and I thought I needed a, uh, a new toy to take with me. So there's, there's this guy. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So I've been I've been loaning up with uh, some games and uh, Fire Emblem is uh, I want to play Centered Shadows, so that's kind of the main reason why I'm getting back into it. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, a little bit of my playthrough, and then what? I, but what I've heard is like you have to play the side story to get those characters into the main game. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh well, I guess I should probably play Centered Shadows first. But uh, but I have been playing Fire Emblem again, and I. Fire Emblem is just a that is a game that is a game that I think if you're a strategy fan and you're not playing playing that I don't know what you're doing so uh, and then like I said I play I've been playing some Darksiders Genesis I don't I don't know if I'm gonna finish that game or not you know I know I know uh, Luke Lore of uh, Xbox Expansion Pass or loves that game and he loves the series and I I wish I loved it as much as he did but I I just don't mm. so. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say about those games. I that's all I've kind of been playing. That and uh, Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart Eight again. I've been kind of just putzing around in there and racing a couple races and you know turning it off. It's still real good. Wish we had another Mario Kart game soon because I've been playing this since two thousand and what thirteen. Yeah, I still think so, you believe the rumors that it might come this fall. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I think it's coming to twenty three. I don't think it's coming anytime soon. 23? Jeez. Uh, he also thinks we're getting arms, too. So that's why I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we get arms, too. I'm with you on that one. I mean, I wouldn't say no to arms, too. I just feel like there's a couple other games they would make before arms, too. <laughs> well, oh, that's I hope they why make wave breaks before arms, too. But, like, I still want arms, too. Well, that's why I feel like there's a lot of games in production right now that haven't been announced because Nintendo said it, and I think Arms 2 was wonderful. I think they're just playing it out on how they want to release it. I wonder, I wonder, like, speaking about, I mean, not just Arms, but, like, the games that we've gotten this gen already, do you think we'll see sequels? Like, a lot of people think we're going to get a Splatoon 3 also. But... I, you know what? I, I mentioned that uh, I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, that that I could see them doing Splatoon three, and I I personally would like to see them do it free to play, um, with with battle passes, with mm-hmm. uh, paid cosmetic DLC. Like I, you know, I I'd even 
go to as far as saying a DLC story mode kind of thing where where you could pay let's say 20 30 40 bucks or whatever and mm-hmm. get uh, a story mode if you wanted to follow you know the agent story or whatever they do with that uh, in that particular game but I would I, I could really see them going free to play with that one and using uh, if, the, the Fortnite method. Mm-hmm. If it was going to mobile, yes. But Nintendo, because it's console, they're treating it as a business. And so they want you to pay for their IP. They yeah. don't want to really do a free to play and then nitpick them, you with all these market transactions. I could see them doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, $60 game and then a battle pass to be honest with you <laughs> I mean it, it, yeah I, go full Call of Duty with it yeah I just think Nintendo holds like they like to hold their IP to a higher standard quote unquote and like the way they do that is they charge $60 forever for their games right and so uh, but I mean don't get me wrong I would play another Splatoon I think I think Splatoon yeah. is a marvelous game I just playing other things you know when it came out i was playing breath of the wild i was playing horizon i was playing mario kart and splatoon kind of got the 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 shelf mostly because i mostly because i was playing uh, a lot of the shovel knight stuff also and mm. and uh what was the other game that came out around then uh oh i was playing i was playing arms because i was like arms looks cool i was just gonna say weird. yeah arms that's that's kind of why i moved on from arms like i i had a a really fun couple of weeks with that game and then splatoon came out and completely absorbed my whole life yeah and uh arms kind of got you know left uh just but, dangling but yeah. and that happens with a whole bunch of nintendo games like yeah like I mean, Mario Maker was that for me too, right? Like I had a good three yeah. weeks with Mario Maker, and then Fire Emblem came out, and I was like, I'm done, goodbye. <laughs> mm-hmm. That happened with the first year of Switch. Everybody yeah. was like, Oh, Breath of the Wild. Okay, now let's play Mario Kart Eight. Now let's play Arms. Now let's play this. Let's play that. And it's just like month by month, they was dropping gems first party, and people were just like, I will play this for a month and then move on. So I, whether I beat it or not. You know, mm-hmm. and still to this very day, people do it. I do it so much; it's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm doing Mario Maker three. Oh, Ultimate Alliance three came out. Now got to play Fire Emblem. Oh, now, now uh, here comes uh, Dam- Damon ha- X Machina, The Witcher, the, <laughs> Link's Awakening, Dragon yeah. Quest, Link's Awakening, Overwatch. Oh like. crap! Dragon Quest <laughs> at, uh, eleven S just dropped. Got to play that. Oh, here go Luigi's Mansion. Oh, here go Pokemon. Like. Hot stuff kept dropping for Switch, and everybody jumps around to it. Yeah, no, mercy. I mean, Hearing you go through that list like that is just like, man, the Switch has had some bangers, dude. Like, yes, I, yeah. I can't. It is, it's I been can't, a good couple of years. I know. I, dude, if we could have just got one one of these Switch years on the Wii U's life cycle, like I would have been just right? fully happy. Uh, I mean, there's only like four. I have my Wii U plugged in because I, I've been recording some stuff for something that I'm working on. And like, there's only like four or five Wii U games left <laughs> to even, yeah. you know, uh, Xenoblade X, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Mario 3D World, and then Pikmin 3, I think, are the, the five games that I'm like, I'd be fine unplugging my Wii U if these came over. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. We're going to get in some of this. Uh, some of these news bits here um enough uh reminiscing about the <laughs> the the past nintendo uh kind of a it feels like a kind of a slow news week this week so uh hold on to your butts some uh journey of this to the savage planet might be released on the switch uh so it seems exciting uh that's the uh first person <laughs> shooter that a lot of people this is the one that a lot of people kind of compare to metroid prime right where you're kind of scanning everything and uh mm-hmm. kind of co-op uh there's some there's been some uh japanese uh ratings for for switch uh from 2k games world and uh I'll just read this uh, short story here from Nintendo Life. Uh, Journey to the Savage Planet was a game released on Windows, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 at the end of last month. It's a sci-fi adventure first-person shooter requiring you to explore an uncharted planet to see if it's fit for human colonization. If it sounds like your kind of game and you happen to own a Switch, then you might be interested to hear that multiple listings for Nintendo release have recently appeared online. According to Go Nintendo, online retailer Deep Discount recently listed a physical version for a June 30th release date, and Amazon Japan has followed suit uh, with its own Switch listing. Uh, of course, June 30th is a placeholder date, usually 
uh, keying the end of a f fiscal quarter. So uh, be wary of that. Uh, but also, these on online retailers have also listed games like Catherine Full Body, XCOM 2, Bioshock Collection, and Ancestors of Legacy for Nintendo Switch. So, uh, yeah, how do you guys feel about this game coming to Switch? I mean, seems like everybody's trying to get a piece of that Switch pie, and it is becoming crowded. Mm -hmm. It's cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I think this game looks interesting, but I'd rather have Metroid Prime 4. Yes. Uh, if I'm going to be scared, yeah, things, I'm going to be want to be a in a cool suit like Samus. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. I mean, you know, watching the trailer for this, um, it looks cool. It looks. I, I definitely agree. I'd rather Metroid, but uh, it seems like they're still hiring people for that team. So when are we going to get that game? You know, is that a 2023, 24, I mean, 25 think, game? Who the hell knows? Right? 23. I, mean, I think. I think 22 at the very earliest and then I, but I'm, yeah. my money's on 23 because let's see if if I mean we don't really we have a question about this later but like if if some games are going to get announced for this fall that we don't know about like next year is probably going to be Zelda right and then mm -hmm. uh, you know maybe Bayonetta next year as well so I mean yeah I think 2022 positioning it as their holiday game would be a pretty smart window but uh I don't, I don't so know. So I, I think uh, looking looking at it that way, uh, if this can scratch that itch, uh, it might be a Warface situation where you know it's it's not Call of Duty. It's kind of an ugly game. It's it's you know not the the best, but it's an online shooter. And if you have a Switch and that's your only console or your main console, you can't play Call of Duty. You can't play uh, Battlefield or whatever other first person sh online shooters coming out. Uh, download Warface play that enjoy it this might be it if you're waiting for your metroid fix until they release the prime trilogy collection fingers crossed uh or eventually down the road metroid prime 4 this this could be enough to just kind of hold you over for a little bit so More, yeah, it's, yeah you know switch is crowded but uh not with this stuff yeah it's most that's most fair. switch players are willing to give any game on this platform a chance mm -hmm. so it so whether you know this interests somebody or not there are going to be some people that are going to be like oh you know what this is a cool indie game i'd rather give it a try mm -hmm. i'll put some money down and give it a try if mm -hmm. the price is right i mm -hmm. mean i think it's more of an indie game I th it's what 50 bucks i think like i mean i I've, I've seen a little bit of this game like it's a co-op you can play the whole game co-op and uh i don't know it 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 looks it looks neat like I like the art style and stuff. Uh, I just mm -hmm. I I would maybe if they release a demo. I know a lot of games are releasing demos these days, and uh, I would like to play the demo and see. You know, it's it's one of those. Yeah. So but it like, it like, strikes me also as uh, oh sorry uh, strikes me also as a game that would would come out on Switch and then you'd see it on sale on Xbox and PlayStation the mm -hmm. same week. Like it comes to Game Pass so it'd be or something like full, that week. Or or that yeah right I find that's that's been happening more and more lately because I think they're kind of realizing that things sell really well on Switch so how do you combat that well the Switch version is full sixty dollars or forty dollars so we're going to drop it down to forty or twenty or whatever right and it, it happens so much and and as someone who, with multiple consoles I'm looking at that saying do I really want to play this on the go. Do I want that ability or do I want it in 4K HDR or whatever for half price? And well, it's, it's a it, constant battle, right? Yeah. But it, it for some people, that don't even matter because it'd be like, okay, I'll get it for PS4 and then I'll double dip and get a physical because it came out. I mean, I, like right. people people are willing to go out and get a physical version of this game if someone does it over PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, too, like it depends on... Uh, like for me, I buy a lot of things that people don't usually buy on switch on switch because, you know, I have a 19 month old and my wife and right. I just kind of like, can't, don't really have a lot of time to play games. And when I do, I'm like, I would rather be playing switch in bed or, or whatever, you know, cause it's easier, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so like, you know, like the Witcher and doom and, and stuff is are on my switch because that's, I'm one of the few people who bought, who've bought and played doom first on switch because 
that was the life I was living, you know, and yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. So, yeah, I've uh, I have a kid coming in May, so I feel you on that front. And every and I've talked about this on co-op mode. Every decision I make now is what am I going to have time to play? What is going to fit into my life? Well, those and first, that kind of and and I've the, I've talked about Doom specifically. Yeah, um, those first three months that. you're gonna have a lot of time to game because it'll just it, your kid will just lay there, right? Like I mean. I right. thought I thought I was like I thought I was like oh no I'm not gonna be able to play games I gotta take care of this baby, no they just sleep a lot and <laughs> all you have to do is like make sure that they don't like roll over right and and you're mm-hmm. fine you know like I would sit on the couch with uh, her in my lap and just kind of play Switch and like it was kind of nice because you know either I was playing in handheld mode or I would like hold her and have the joy cons off the Switch and just play with the joy cons mm-hmm. which was actually very nice on the TV you know and. It's uh, yeah, kids, kids. That it's it's after those first three to five months that you're gonna be like, oh no. <laughs> I need, as long I just, as you don't use their head as a kickstand, that's uh, oh uh, wow, that's, nope, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> the tablet, I cannot no. yeah. confirm yeah. nor deny that I did that. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, our next story: uh, an ESRB rating appears online for Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition which means we might get a release date in the next Direct. Uh, Following uh, on last week's classification in South Korea, the upcoming Switch release of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition has now received an ESRB rating in North America. According to Japanese Nintendo, this information was discovered on Nintendo's webpage for the game. Like previous entries in the Xenoblade Chronicles series, the Definitive Edition has been rated T for Teen for blood, mild language, partial nudity, use of alcohol and tobacco, and violence so this is another game i'm looking forward to revisiting because i remember really really loving it on the wii and then i remember really really hating it on the 3ds so uh i would i think we'll oh oh i was just gonna say i would really like to play this game on the tv again and and like watching the trailer and stuff it looks like they've really brought it up to snuff and really kind of upgraded it to make it look feel and look more like uh xenoblade 2 at least so I think this is a June or a July game. I think they're going to really feature it in a direct for E3. Um, mm-hmm. Probably kind of remind people that, hey, you know, this game is coming out. So we want to show you more of it here at our, our at our show. Mm-hmm. Um, the game releases two weeks after E3. And there you go. People will somewhat have their collection full until we get Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I really hope that they announce. Please, Nintendo, just drop that out of nowhere at a, for a direct and just say it's digital only. Get your get your thing. If you want it physical, it'll be out later on in the year or something. Like I literally need them to do that for right now. Yeah, uh, but I think it's a I think it's a June or July game. It's a gr- it'll be a great summer game because nothing else is coming out. Once the Last of Us two drop, what else is there to play for the summer? Mm-hmm. Mm. Sony and Microsoft not going to have nothing game wise. I mean, I think yeah, you know, I think a lot of people are really looking forward to uh, those new consoles and everything, especially with what, yeah. what Xbox just dropped on the you know those the upgrade system and stuff that we were talking about beforehand mm-hmm. and. Uh, I really think uh, the the pickings are slim in, until this fall for those consoles, and I think Nintendo has really taken advantage of summer actually because of uh, you know last year was uh, or two years ago was uh, what Captain Toad and uh, uh, Octopath Traveler. Last year was yeah. was Fire Emblem and Mario Maker, Mario and, Maker and, Two, and, uh, Astral Chain. So I mean they they've really taken advantage of those mm-hmm. summer months and think, yeah, good good on, good on them, you know. So. They, it was just bunkers because they went into a strong. They had a strong summer, and a stronger fall. Mm-hmm. Like how do you how do you go from Mario Maker two to Pokemon, and just like month after month, there's something to always. Buy. I mean, I can list all the games between five um, between Mario Maker and Sep- fi- Pokemon again if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> September was nonsense, dude. September Crazy. was stupid, dude. I mean, if you bought every game that came out in September, you'd be like selling a kidney i mean it's it's ridiculous <laughs> you know like i wanted and the crazy thing is it's like i wanted all those games and eventually i got you know quite a few of them to play but like mm-hmm. if you're gonna buy them 
you were you were you better be single and like i don't know selling st- illegal substances on the side i, I don't know okay the single part yes the substance is i don't know nothing about <laughs> i don't believe you Ed. i'm just kidding uh, Mark, are you gonna be? Are you gonna play? Try to play this again, or are you? Are you kind of? Uh, I've never played it. Ooh. I've actually never played this game. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, it might be one that that I pick up. I, I don't. Uh, I don't tend to play a lot of uh, of RPGs or JRPGs. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. This is this is one that, uh, thanks to Smash Brothers uh, introducing us to characters and seeing this trailer and seeing it on various mm-hmm. platforms and stuff in the past, I've always been kind of curious the, uh, uh, the well, quick question mm-hmm. um did did they do a pre-order for the wii version when it first came out did in they Canada? oh in Canada. i'm not sure i forgot you're from the great white north they do things different up right. there uh i know <laughs> i know because for us to get it we had to pre-order exclusively at GameStop to yeah. get it like they weren't <sighs> sending it on storage okay. you had to pre-order it so i can understand if you not planned it because mm-hmm not pre-ordered it but i was i was wondering like if if you are friends that you know or gamers that you know in canada did they pre-order this game when it first came out i cannot remember offhand to be honest uh i know like i remember people talking about it so it must have been available if not at eb games maybe it was a wider release in canada and you guys were actually a little bit stifled by the release yeah, i we, can't remember, I remember how that was that was rolled out i remember here specifically they like our gamestop had like a limited amount and if you didn't pre-order it you weren't getting it yeah yeah wow. and they okay. were actually like um, like three or four months later they were actually giving you more money than you paid for it to turn around and sell it for geez. like like a hundred bucks they were turning around to the, sell it for like a hundred bucks at least and that's why yeah, and that's why Nintendo, when they realized how quick that game sold because of all the pre-orders, they decided to put it on 3DS. Yeah, when right. it came. Yeah. Wow. So, let me let me tell you one thing, Mark. Uh, Z- I don't I don't really remember how Xenoblade Chronicles One plays, but Xenoblade Chronicles Two is a it, like ex- exploration and and finding stuff is a lot like Breath of the Wild, and it feels that way because part of that part of uh that team worked on breath of the wilds uh terrain in their okay. mat, in their world building so like you know it is a jrpg but it doesn't really feel like one if that makes sense so cool yeah uh, uh, depending on what time of year this comes out again i really have a feeling you know that time of may june july i might be really really tied to my switch and if there's nothing else new that's really drawing me this might be something that like you said i'm i'm sitting there i have a lot of switch time i'm trying to find something and this might be just the perfect game to sink a hundred hours in or however long it takes uh at that time so we'll we'll see kind of how it's striking me when it strikes but right now not knowing when it's coming out what else is going to be around uh, i know there were rumors this is coming out in may you're thinking it's coming out a little bit later yeah we'll see We'll see. Yeah, because I think what would happen if they did it in May, The Last of Us Two would kill it. Uh, I mean, people would still get it, but that motivation to play it yeah. may somewhat belong to The Last of Us Two. Yeah. After yeah. May is done, give it back to Nintendo and let that game be the lead. Because I'm just like, it's it's easier money for Nintendo because nothing else is out there to play. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, unless you're getting that Pokemon DLC, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be. What does the Pokemon yeah, DLC right. come out? May, does it come out in May? No, it, or does it comes June? out in April. I don't remember. Uh, but I you know, I, it'll. Day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, spring and fall, isn't it, or something like that, or yeah, yeah, something like that. We're just two of them. Yeah, I and mean, I think there's the two. Yeah, one. one's in spring, one's in the fall. So um, yeah. All right, we're going to move on to our last story here because we actually have uh, a few questions to answer uh, before we get out of here. So uh, just a just a last quick bit of news. Uh, it's not really news. It's kind of a cute story. Uh, Nintendo customer support goes above and beyond for 95-year-old grandma's busted Game Boy. Uh, Nintendo's, uh, pretty much Nintendo's customer service uh, took a, a, a 95-year-old lady. Her, her She played Tetris on her Game Boy all the time and... Uh, 
it started to the the screen stopped working uh it kind of started getting lines in it and whatever and she uh she got it. nintendo fixed it for her for for free and it was it's kind of endearing so uh i thought that was kind of kind of cute that they would do not that. not only fixed it they they couldn't actually fix it so it was a the, the story i found was so cute it was uh they there was a miss miscommunication and they they, they thought instead of a, a good customer service they said it was uh i, I think it translated to something like a paper service or excellent paper service so they they kind of sent the the Game Boy into Nintendo. Uh, they got a letter back or a package back saying, we don't have the pieces or the parts to fix this anymore, but here's a new Game Boy that we actually found in a warehouse for free. I hope you have a, a you know, enjoy the rest of your days. You know, you're 95. I think she lived to 99, still playing her Game Boy straight through. Uh, this was a couple of years ago, so she she has since passed on. But that is such a sweet story, and it's weird that it didn't come out before you'd think. Yeah, you, you know, think that, this would have come out like, especially in the age of the internet, that it would have come out earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, here it is. Yeah, uh, excellent. Uh, Nintendo offered excellent customer support, but it was mistranslated as. Uh, excellent paper uh, paper support thanks to Kotaku. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, man, so sweet. I know, man. I love so I sweet. love hearing about like old people playing video games. Because <laughs> like I hope, first of all, I hope I live to be ninety five and still playing video games. <laughs> but uh, exactly, uh, it's just it's fun because you hear about that lady that play that like eighty year old woman who plays Skyrim every day. Uh, and and stuff like that. It's just kind of yeah. It's it's cute. Yeah, the Korean was it Korean grandpa that was going around on his bike or something with yeah, like with like a bunch of phones or something attached yeah, to, to it. And was like Go. playing Pokemon Go. Like, yeah, yeah it's like just stuff like that. It's just so cool. Yeah, I love it. I hope we have some just absolutely lit Smash Brothers tournament in the old folks' home. Yeah, you know, like that's what it's gonna be. Just office on repeat and uh, friends. And uh, some some Smash Brothers and Mario Kart. Yeah, you better have your friend what codes about Wii ready Sports? in uh, the old old folks' home. <laughs> and Wii Sports, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, all right, we're gonna get into the question block here. Remember, you can email us at nintendopileblock at gmail or reach out to us on Twitter via our question threads. Uh, that is at boss underscore rush underscore games. You can you can find us there. Deshaun Malone, the old standby, uh, he writes in and says, what do you guys think of Nintendo Spring? Do you think it's a little lackluster, or do you think it's good enough for a banger fall or holiday? It is uh, it's a great opening for 2020. Um, now that everything pretty much got pushed back and thrown later on in the year, pretty much everybody now is looking for games to play and Nintendo has them. Rescue mm-hmm. Dungeon is going to be big. Uh, Animal Crossing, uh, uh, Animal Crossing, and Doom Eternal working together. Even though Doom Eternal is going to be later on for Switch, with Ori and the Blind, Will of the Wisp also complimenting Animal Crossing. Like people are loving the stuff that Nintendo has planned for uh, this spring. Um, I, I think because there was so much dis- disappointment that all the delays happening, uh, you, you need to be, have something. Uh, you you need to have something concrete, um, uh, in order to be like this is the reason why I got this system, you know. And I think a lot of the delays for some of the other games has diminished a lot of people's hype and expectations. Um, but for the spring right now, even just even up to April, Nintendo has just been knocking it out. Is strong, and we still don't know what they could drop and what they could announce, along with third party and indies. Yeah. So, like this spring is a really good opening, and they, we at least know up to probably June what we can expect, and then be hit with another cavalcade of games that's gonna be like y'all bringing that. Oh, that looks cool. That looks interesting. Platinum might have like before this before people even see this uh, episode, Platinum got another game dropping to announce. So that might be available for Switch. We don't know what it is. So that might be something that could lead it to the spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It did it for Astro Chain. We didn't even know that was coming out. And it, was, and it came out with 
though in the end of summer in August. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, if you look at you look at the the release, like I mean, they're not a lot of the games aren't like huge. I'm gonna go buy a Switch for this game type games, but there's actually been a ton for Switch, right? Like uh, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, obviously, Oddworld Strangers Wrath, which is a game that I will will fight for until you know. Whatever Kentucky Route Zero, everybody. I'm. I think uh, there's a lot of good word around that game. Uh, mm-hmm. You know that that weird Dark Crystal Tactics game came out, which you know it seems like an okay game. Uh, Dark Siders, uh, uh, Devil May Cry Three, Ed. You said it, which people like, but you know whatever. Uh, Samurai Showdown mm-hmm. just came out. Uh, the Metro, the, the Metro, Metro games just came out. You know, there's there's a lot. Animal Crossing, it, it, there's there's a lot out now you know and then you got the pokemon you got the pokemon game and the pokemon dlc uh so and, and you got the uh the cor- uh the coral s- switch light that everybody wants and look at and I love i wanted it i wanted it but then i'm like are people gonna look at me weird for playing this little pink switch you know and then i'm like i'll just get blue and the and animal, no, I, I animal cross the switch I had the Animal Crossing Switch in my cart ready for pre-order pretty much every site that it came up on. Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, wherever it went up. I put it in my cart and I'd be hovering over that order button and I'd go, no, I have a kid on the way. I got to buy a crib or something. Like, it's just like, no, I can't do it. I can't justify it. We have two switches, perfectly functioning switches in the house already. I, know, I, can't, was, I can't justify it. That was that was my thing too. And then I'm just like, you know, mm-hmm. I just i'm just gonna do it because you know i i I just just gonna do it just gonna do it yeah so i uh i should have i should have but uh for for me i don't know i i animal crossing is is the big one i think for for this spring um personally not super excited for pokemon mystery dungeon i tried the demo and stuff i wasn't super impressed with what i saw yeah uh pardon me um to, to me, it's an okay spring. It's not a... a we, we've gone through the bangers that Switch has released, uh, you know, month after month after month after month, the last couple of years. And it seems like so far this year, they've been kind of resting on that Animal Crossing being the big thing. Um, yeah, but I, if you remember last year's first couple months weren't bangers either. Like, I think we got, no, they, we got new Super Mario Brothers and... Uh, what was the March game? Yoshi's Crafted World. Like that was yeah. that was yeah. last yeah. spring, you know, and that was yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> c- compared to that, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Um, I I want to see more, and I I know everyone's been waiting for a direct, and it's been the direct route and all that kind of whatever. Um, and and I I am still kind of waiting for them to drop something big, or at least know what's coming in the the end of the spring or in the summer or, or what's going on. Uh. I, I am excited for several games that are coming out in the spring, but I think Corey, you you nailed it when you said there's nothing to rush out and buy a Switch for, but see, other than but, maybe Animal Crossing. But yeah. the problem is, is that you know it is something to get a Switch for because all the big stuff that was supposed to be hidden right now got delayed. So what are you? So what is there to look? Nintendo well, I mean, is at the. I, I mean, think, Nintendo's, I think if you're gonna buy a Switch of... now, like I think, I think you have like a massive library to go back to as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people are yeah. still, you know, using their uh, Christmas or Hanukkah money, right, to to buy stuff, and and you know, there's and yeah. people still have birthdays and stuff. I I'm and it's tech and it's <laughs> and it's tech season, so people are going to get a Switch Lite or get another Switch, mm-hmm. um, because not not just for Animal Crossing, but because they want something else to play, or they want to still play The Witcher Three on the go, or they want to play the Mega Man uh, Zero Collection. Like they want to, people want to do all of that stuff. You took the last away, you took the Last of Us away from us to May. You moved Final Fantasy Seven Remake to uh, to April. You, yes, or in the Blind Forest got moved to March. Like. This month was supposed to be a big thing for mm-hmm. gamers for those other consoles because all of that stuff is not here. And Cyberpunk 2077, which was supposed to be in April, got moved, got moved and delayed. All of that big stuff got out of the way. So, if unless you're doing your backlog stuff or you finishing up your Christmas games or Hanukkah games, if you want something hot and new, Switch right now is the thing to go to. And mm-hmm. they have the games too, games for it. Some in the past, some of it now. Everybody been wanting to talk your Mirage session. 
we got it. People mm-hmm. went out and bought it and still loving that game. Plus, I people think, are, plus, I think people are wanting Tokyo Mirage Sessions because all those Persona 5 rumors, you know, I think a lot of Persona mm-hmm. fans with Switches are, are, you know, the Royal or Royal probably isn't coming out till what, this summer, right? For in, in, in the West? It's out, it's out in Japan. I think so, already, yeah. Right? And so, you know, I think people hungry for that are, are, wait, are jumping on Tokyo Mirage Sessions because they didn't buy a Wii U and the Switch is popular. You know, it's... It, mm-hmm. I think those people, you know, I, I just think the the switch, the switch is a phenomenon, first of all, and I I don't think it needs games every every week to sell the system, right? I think people just like it, whether it's a Switch Lite or the yeah. Switch, the regular Switch or whatever, right? Like, and look how many of how many people have bought two Switches already or three Switches? Oh yeah, so yeah, that's crazy. It it. it people want to add games to that to the switch library and these are just some nice complimentary games for it that's mm-hmm. why i said they they have a good they have a good start for this year they would have a decent they would have had a decent start of everybody else, of all of those games that was playing to come out if they came out nintendo still would have had a decent start but now yeah. it's just like you you are the system that i need to go to because you delayed all your big stuff yeah plus so, i think i think it helps too that like the xbox one and the playstation 4 are winding down right and they don't have a lot yeah, yeah. and i think everybody at this point you know i mean ubisoft proved that we're like we're going to delay our games to be on next gen as well as, as current, but yeah. you know, and, yeah. and cause, I mean, because we all saw this... the reason for the, um, the cyberpunk delay. I mean, that was pretty evident this week yeah. when they said, you know, no one should have to pay for an upgrade. We're going to have this ready for series X, uh, for free. I mean, that's, that's pretty evident that they've delayed that game mm-hmm. specifically for those next generation consoles. Yeah. And, I feel uh, like the Avengers is going to be yeah. the same way. And yeah, but, yeah. absolutely. And and I'm sure Final Fantasy VII is going to be the same way, even though you know because that's episodic. You're going to want at least those mm-hmm. next two parts to to have that function on the mm-hmm. on the next system. So, plus you know it coming it's coming out on Xbox One and Series X next year. So, uh, right. Yeah. And and I and I think those other systems need those games for their launch day for release because this just it kind of showcases that. In in a sense, Microsoft and Sony don't have nothing first party wise really planned for the system. So, so they need Cyberpunk. Yeah. They need Avengers. They need all that third party to help fill in the gaps for games they mm-hmm. don't have ready. We well, have I mean, we have I mean we have Halo Infinite. Yeah, but I mean but like what, the the thing is and too Her- and Hellblade. At least too. at least from what they're saying, you know, I know I know we're gonna move on, but like Yes. Those systems are those games are gonna be available backwards too right like so you don't need to buy those systems day one and Mm -hmm. you know with xbox at least you know you're gonna play halo infinite if you can't afford a series x and then you can upgrade later and still enjoy halo infinite without yeah you know and game pass changes that whole story as well too right but uh you know again mark with cyberpunk like that's such a huge thing to see a third party jump on that bandwagon as well and and i think i think that sets a precedent that if other third parties don't follow suit that they're going to get some negative attention. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I forget who it was uh, this past week that was saying uh, the predictions for kind of this next generation, what do they think it's going to be? It might have been kind of funny. Um, and it was they, they said something like companies that don't embrace crossplay are – going to start really really feeling it you know people are going to come at them right now it's okay uh they prefer it you know if there's no cross save cr- uh, cross save cross play whatever uh right now it's kind of a yes or no whatever kind of thing um next generation or this coming generation um that's not going to be accepted mm-hmm. at all anymore right, right. and we i just... think it's going to be quickly the same with the with this upgrade system yeah i mean you saw you saw call of duty do it this year like we just read a story mm-hmm. on arsenal x uh on sunday that you know PUBG you can party up with playstation and xbox players right like you can yeah. be in the same party which is pretty big you know i mean i know it's not a triple a game but that's still a, a a pretty big deal and and fortnite obviously does it uh i think you know once you start seeing next gen roll around you're gonna see 
I think I think you're going to see like Ubisoft games do it. I think you're going to see Destiny and the Division do it. You know, I think you're going to start seeing these games cross over. So, mm-hmm. and Switch been doing it with some of their P- the PC titles, yeah, like, like Civilization. Like the, the Witcher, Witcher getting three got just PC like, cross save is a huge deal. You know, yeah, like, that's a yeah. pretty big my, deal. Yeah, my my brother was. Uh, pretty against picking that game up on switch just because he had spent so much time in it on pc that he said he didn't he wasn't really interested in starting over on switch Uh, as soon as that story came out it was an instant text saying wow like i'm going to get this game on switch now because i can kind of carry over that save and i can enjoy my PC save on the go, which is, you know, again, that, that Mm -hmm. switch magic. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And seeing, you know, the two K games do that too. Like uh, Civ Civ is doing it. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm a thousand percent sure that, you know, quote, if XCOM comes to the switch, like that's going to have PC cross save because that seems to be, that just seems to be that. And I think what pillars of eternity has cross PC cross save too, or, or yeah, it does. Was that it? I think, one of those RPGs, yeah. I, I never, I can always get them all confused. It's either Pillars of Eternity or, or what's the Push other one? What's it? I don't remember. I don't remember. But all right, we're gonna move on to this next mm. next thing. But welcome to uh, you know the Boss Rush podcast. Uh, our next question comes from Megan Green. She asks, "I have a friend who doesn't really play a lot of games. I've been trying to come up with a few to encourage her to try, but I'm struggling. What co-op games?" Uh, do you try to get people to play games who never really played before? Snipper clips okay. is one. <laughs> That's that one. Ooh, snipper clips. If you want to end friendships, yeah. Snipper clips. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I that can be a say, fun one though. I, I would say this. There's a game by Wait for it called Vitamin. Oh, the vitamin. vitamin game. Oh, uh, uh, it vitamin just came spot? out. Vitamin Connect. No, oh, Ooh, shit. What's that game? I, think I just reviewed Connection, that. Something like that. Yeah. And it's a co op game. I think if 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 you want your friends to get into games and stuff like that, it's always to start new with them. Uh, so Snipper Clips, yes, that is a good game if you haven't played it. But something mm-hmm. like that, because no one you haven't played it and that person haven't played it, it'd be a good thing to get in, learn it, and laugh. You really want to get people when doing co op games to make them laugh. So Overcook would be a good one because both of you guys are messing up or working together and just completely laughing. Um you got uh the just dance games. Um you kind of got like one two switch for example, you kind of want to get games that would get somebody in that you could get into also at a new time and laugh with them and learn it and actually have a fun time. Um, that's the way kind of, you know, to ease them in. Don't give them nothing like pull your pull your Tetris and you just demolish mm-hmm. it them with it just because it's Tetris or something like that. Corey, I know. You're, you're taking all the fun out of my, t- my Tetris game here, Ed. But, but I'd say but something. Just, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, oh, no, but you just want to do something like that. You just want to ease them in with some of those games. Uh, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. That's, uh, that's, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I, I, I'm going to try to build upon that and say, depending on what type of person your friend is, you can, you can kind of gear things towards them. So, uh, safe bet for a lot of people, uh, the Mario Party series, Super Mario Party, single Joy-Con, very easy to get. You practice the games beforehand. We just had my brother-in-law in. Uh, now, he is a gamer, but doesn't own a Switch, has not played Mario Party since, I'm going to say two, maybe. Uh, and it's a good he one won. to stop with. He ended up winning. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. Yeah, uh, but, you know, it, it was fun for that casual kind of thing. We're just hanging out on a, on a Friday night and uh, playing some Mario Party. Um you, you know, you don't, you, I'd rather play that versus uh, Smash Brothers with, with someone who's never played. Mm-hmm. Um, things like, uh, even, even something like Ring Fit Adventure could be something mm-hmm. cool to, to try to get someone into video games. Now, it's not something that you can play co op, um, but it might spark that interest with your friend of, of showing them that games can be more than just uh, Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever. Um, Mario, yeah, Mario Kart. Yeah. 
I mean, you could you, you know, could totally kind of just thing. you could totally just build a level and like show that like literally do what Super Mario Brothers did for all of us. I'm I'm assuming you know like mm-hmm. it just teaches you how to play it right. Like if you don't jump over that Goomba, mm-hmm. you're dead. You know you you you're gonna die. So uh, it, and and I got my wife to to play Mario Kart with me, but I think it was a lot easier when the Switch version came out because you could turn on all the the assist things and and she really enjoyed Mm -hmm. that because i mean she she doesn't she doesn't play games right she's she thinks i'm weird for playing so many right but you know she Mm -hmm. she uh she does enjoy mario kart and i think she enjoys it more knowing that she has a there's there's training wheels you know and and i do Mm -hmm. wish i do wish more games did that uh but you know once once they get a little bit better overcooked again if you want to end some friendships really quickly Mm-hmm. That's a great game. You know, you, you learn if you can communicate effectively with your friends or you end up calling each other expletives and throwing a Joy-Con through a TV. Yep. So, and that's can why be fun. those wrist strap warnings are before every game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even, uh, even, even Mario Even stuff Odyssey. like uh, Jackbox. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Jackbox is a great party game. Um, you know, a lot of time you, you end up using your, your phone for that one or something mm-hmm. different. So uh, if someone's afraid of a controller, uh, most people know how to use their phones, mm-hmm. uh, right? They, you know, they, they know how to, to do that. So it might be a way to ease people in. Um, and there's how many Jackbox party packs? I think like, there's like six now. Yeah. Eighty, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you got the Lego uh, games. You know, twenty dollars, yeah. like could get you in. Of that person, be like, I want to play a little bit more with some more action. Get them some Lego games. Don't don't give them Bayonetta too. That's not gonna work. Mm. <laughs> That's a little bit too much. But like some of the Lego games will be nice for it. Um, even. I just, sorry, I just got really excited and then I got really sad at the same time. Uh, I was I was scrolling down Nintendo Life's website to see if there was anything like whatever because they do those you know those best of this is the best uh, you know uh-huh. action games these are the best co op games there's one with uh, best chill games but right next to it it says Mass Effect arrives on the Nintendo Switch and then it says dot 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 as a Minecraft Mass Effect pack and I got yes I, I got see so that. sad I see that and I was just like <laughs> Nintendo Life I despise uh. you. <laughs> Anyways, oh, sorry. Uh, continue. Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, another great one because you have the the uh, w- cheat characters for the lack of a better yeah. word. Uh, that that basically you can't die. You run through the whole stage. Uh, so you know uh, someone who's good at games can pick one of the standard characters, and then uh, the other person can be um, who is in that game? Navit. Navit, and is then like, uh, Toadette. It's uh, like and and Toadette. Yes. Yeah. It's uh Mario Rabbit two player also. I don't think so. Uh, oh, speaking of though, speaking of Toad and Toadette, I think there is a co-op or not a, a competitive mode, but yeah. Anyway, oh, uh, yeah. Captain Toad is also a pretty decent, yeah, yeah, co-op, a co-op game now. So, uh, Stardew Valley is also on this list. But uh. mm. all right, we're gonna get to our last question here from Greg Osterman the third. He says, "Hey, gang." Uh, what do you think the big surprise of 2020 will be for Nintendo? Something that hasn't been announced, uh, but is something you think will. Uh, man, I don't know what they could do to surprise me anymore, man. I, I, I That Breath of the Wild 2 teaser was like about as big of a surprise as you could get last year. Um, mm. um, I think... It, it will have to rely more on Sega. So if Sega decides to bring uh, <laughs> some Dreamcast look. games, some some Dreamcast games or something to Sega Ages to be on the eShop, that would be a big surprise. Cause, because a lot of their... Sega's been going in the right direction on Switch doing Sega Ages, doing letting indie developers I thought you or were go like that emu. Route putting like, all the Atlas a- games on Switch. I thought you were going to go with, like, Persona and, and Shin Megami Tensei, finally. And- uh, they, well, yeah. the, the, everybody's expecting that, uh, so that wouldn't be a surprise. Um, but, like... I like, like surprise for you, Ed, is it? <gasps> right. But, like... Practice Sega, your surprise face, kids. Um, Sega doing some stuff. I think if Konami could get some games out on Switch, that would be more surprising. Games that will put Konami back in the spot like people liking them. 
Because Superman, Super Bomberman R was a big surprise. Some people started liking them, but some people still despise Konami for a lot of things. But if they could if they could bring a strong presence of games to Switch, I think Konami could be a, one of the most surprising companies to like get their uh, recognition back, get that fan based love back for that company. So, you know, what if they put on Metal Gear Revenges? The, the, they they could put that on Switch. You know, what if we get Zone of the Enders collection? What if we do get Metal Gear Solid? But if, what if we also get some of their uh, older games like Top Gun or uh, oh Salamander or um, Life Force or, you know, some of the games in Japan that they had that never came out here? Or so, Konami Turtles has a way. Yes. Hey, if. If they could, if they could work something that out, and that shows up on on Super Nintendo Online, if Turtles in Time shows up on that mug this year, that would Dude, probably be the biggest surprise. I quit. Six life. to midnight. Yeah, like hundred percent. Yeah, that would that just got me very excited. Uh, <laughs> the t- the Dude, t- Switch I, Online has gone up forty percent. Dude, literally, literally the only reason why I added games to my Super Nintendo Classic was because of Turtles in Time and Turtles Tournament Fighter. <laughs> Yep, so. my uh, when when my my original Wii got dropped when we were moving into this house, and stopped reading discs. So I decided to turn that into an emulator machine, and yeah, that was that Ken Griffey Jr. Major League Baseball, and uh, oh man, what other like it was like instantly had to get those games on there. Turtles mm-hmm. in Time was one. Um, Arrow the Acrobat, I think, was another one, just because my brother and I, for some reason, really loved those games when we were kids. I mean, I did uh, Just too, stuff like that but, that you're not going to see, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, Arrow the Acrobat is, is yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Konami has, a, yeah, Konami has a lot of great games, and they can put them on Switch. If they got to go through circles and hoops to have it done, and they do it that way, and people are willing to pay it, then let's do it. I mean, Come I on, can... Konami. I'm kind of with you with some, you know, Japanese developers uh, putting putting some bigger games because I I know there's a rumored Monster Hunter game in development for Switch uh, because Generation sold so well uh, mm-hmm. and in the vein of World, not necessarily World, obviously because World is so uh, graphically intensive and online centric. But uh, I could see a, a Monster Hunter be be really well received on Switch. I could I I would really love to see Capcom put the the resident evil remakes although those are pretty graphically intensive mm. as well but also the witcher changed the game so there's no excuse anymore. yeah there's zero excuse yeah, anymore. for sure if it i mean yeah. if it runs if it runs at all there's no excuse if it runs good yeah. it's even better uh but i mean i would i would really love to see maybe a 2d metroid because i mean that, that's been rumored too i know but like i would like to see a 2d metroid just to hold us over as well uh Mm-hmm. But in terms of like really big things that could surprise me, I really, I really don't know. I guess like a like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess finally making it over, uh, I'd be really. <laughs> no, that'd be fun. Yeah. Activision and EA yeah. actually release a triple A game that's not for kids. Uh, no, Ooh. I don't need uh, I don't need a, a FIFA nineteen with the scribbled out <laughs> scribbled out in in red crayon and then ri- written twenty next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the shade. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I'd love to see some like so, things that would surprise me. And I know a couple of these would be rumored. Um, I would love to see them actually announce like doom guy and scorpion for, uh, for smash brothers or one of those two. But like, can you imagine that trailer I see, and just I... like soaked with blood and craziness or like even just like doom guy and Isabel hanging out in a trailer and just being like, come over to party, man. I think how they would great. do if they did Scorpion, honestly, I could see I could actually see this, right? Like they would be they would be on a stage and it, like the Splatoon characters would be involved and you would see the <laughs> the screen splatter and red Splatoon ink, <laughs> right? Cuz they can't do blood cuz it's Nintendo, right? Yeah. But like Yeah. You you say get over here and like their their ink canister explodes and it's red <laughs> paint right I think that would be a hilarious way to do Scorpion that'd be awesome uh, yeah but that's if Nintendo uh, spoke to anybody here in America I mean we got well, yes I mean we did get Banjo technically but I know that's yeah that's that's not American but a little it's, different it's, but it's, uh, you know yeah um I for 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 big surprise announcements. 
I'd like to see them go back and reach into some forgotten and ignored Nintendo franchises. Um, I'm thinking, I already mentioned before, Wave Race, uh, Pilot Wings, Excite Bike, Excite Truck, that series. You could combine those all. 1080 and Snowboarding. 1080 Snowboarding. Like, what about why not racers? combine all of those things? I wish, you know, <laughs> you know when, when... That'd be fun too, man. I wish, I wish when Steep was announced for Switch and then canceled, obviously, but when it was mm-hmm. announced, I wish... Like Ubisoft has done such a great job in Nintendo IP. Why didn't they give it like a 1080, like like a a some just sort of special pack for like maybe the the characters from 1080 or some boards or something from 1080 and like mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. use that IP to push a Switch version? You know, because like I know that didn't sell very well, but like the only reason why Starlink sold at all is because Star Fox was in it, right? I think. Yeah. And I think Ubisoft gave us the best Star Fox game since you know. <laughs> Nintendo 64, 64 to be honest with you yeah uh, uh, 100% and Mario plus Rabbids was such a great thing and and I think Amazing. that I think they could have done that with steep and been like hey here's here's 1080 right like here's the original mountain from 1080 and you can snowboard down it or whatever like they could have done something like unique like that uh, yeah wave race would be super cool I, you know I, I would love to yeah. see a lot of those games like even if like you said if they mixed them all together put ex- like Maybe they put Excite Sports or something, and they put it all yeah, together and been like, exactly. "Okay, here's Excite Bike, here's 1080, here's Wave Race, here's uh, Punch Out." Yeah, Punch Out. Even you know, oh, I'm still out, surprised yeah. Little Mac wasn't a character in Arms. By the way, that still sh- blows my mind. Such a weird, like just leaving him out. So weird. I know. So and like, weird. And like, I understand that like this is a new IP and that that's not really a Punch Out game, but like. It's, it's, why <laughs> I spe- even if he wasn't there for launch like a dlc pack or something I mean, they su- like that they of like that game for here comes months. little mac they supported that get game back for into this game characters like they right? could have totally yeah. just put mac in there so 100 percent, 100 percent agree but yeah I- i'd like to see something like that because i think you know we have rumors of zelda and metroid and this and that and different collections coming up and and i'd i'd love to see the zelda hd games come over i'd love to see every wii u game come over i would look uh, at the rainbow to touch switch beautiful joe would be one for me yeah. well everybody's expected the beautiful that everybody's expected that whole yeah. collection to come yeah i could <laughs> i could i could see that. i would i would love to just see like uh I don't know. I, I I mean, I just want to see everything, but like, I, I want to know what that Star Fox Grand Prix game that was canceled or not canceled, but right. like it was rumored last year so heavily and even like a logo, mm-hmm. like a logo leaked and everything else on that sheet was there except for that. Like, you know, like what, what was that game? Or, you know, my idea was like, if you're going to do a Star Fox racing game, merge it with F zero and give us some F zero characters in there too. You know, yeah. like you can combine yeah. franchises too. It doesn't just have to be like, oh, here's Star Fox over here. Here's Metroid over here. Here's, you know, remember that rumored uh, Star Fox Metroid crossover game yeah. for Wii U for such mm-hmm. a long time? Like, I mean, it's weird, but that would be cool, I guess. You know, like do something weird. This is the time to do something weird. I would love for Nintendo to, like, of course, Eternal Darkness to actually get a sequel. Uh, by one of the indies, probably the people who did Outlast or something. Um, I would love for them to do like Hotel Dust Collection because we never got the second one and only came out in the UK. Like, if we're going franchises that they forgotten, those are some of the ones that Jet Force Gemini by Rare that was on N64. Like, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so yes, I'm telling my age, everybody, but you know my age. This is how far back with games that I go. This is how much Nintendo I have experienced throughout the years. Uh, but this is stuff that if they're going to go there with that to be a surprise, go do it. Go back far and really break out some games that people are going to be like, wait, I've never heard of this. Did you need to get on your history about Nintendo? Because this is mm-hmm. some stuff that you guys don't know about that were kind of like big things when they came out you can keep star fox adventure don't break that game out you know, <laughs> okay so i'm kind of looking at a list of dormant nintendo ip and like mm. well first of all i did hear on on easy ally or maybe it was friend code this weekend like there's rumor to be a, another fire Emblem game come out this year an echoes <sighs> game like like a remake of one of the early ones uh 
So, I mean, I would not say no to that. But also, like, Golden Sun is an RPG that a lot of people mm-hmm. want. A lot of people want the Xenoblade team to tackle that. Uh, <laughs> with Panzer Dragoon coming out, why not another Sin and Punishment game? You know? Mm. Uh Cool. You know, uh, it, it's uh, it's up to treasure because like we don't people well, don't treasure know what can treasure suck is it. Doing. Give us that sin and punishment. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, we we'll definitely buy that. That that's no heck. Give treasure space here your Sega and let them bring it out. You oh, already geez. did sin the punishment. Uh, he might as well give the space area. Uh, and like Kid Icarus, right? Like I mean, we got a 3ds right. game, but like yes. we talk about all the time, like they could do something pretty unique with Kid Icarus in the Breath of the Wild style, but it could be way more vertical because i mean pit can can fly right like they, they, you could do something uh with, with I feel like islands mercury in the clouds si- so mercury steam or mercury system whatever they are i think they got kid icarus i think after doing seven returns i think they got kid icarus i think people will I, uh, will buy that i i actually fairly recently pitched uh kid icarus as um the Nintendo special for Gods and Monsters. Uh, so similar to Mario plus Rabbids or, yeah. or Star Fox in, uh, in uh, Starlink, um, that could be the thing that sets the Nintendo version of that game above anything else. I think you'd kind of fit into that world. Uh, you, you could pit, uh, put Pit into that world uh, quite easily. Yeah. Um, and that, that could be a way to drum up a little bit of interest in that franchise and say, okay, he was really cool in this game, um what else can i get and then you you know you fired out on some virtual console stuff or or you bring out a, a brand new uh kid Icarus game proper yeah um i, I think it'd be really cool yeah and like even if you're not pit directly in that game you could get you have like a, a pit and a dark pit you know armor set you could do some side yeah. missions that revolve around like a uh you know like a, a an ancient greek mythology and you know you find like the, the Kid Icarus characters like remnants throughout the the some of the side quests and, and you pick up <laughs> items and weapons from there and, and yeah that would be like that would be really cool but my question yeah. is who's going to voice pit do we give voice acting in a kid in that new model Kid uh, Icarus uh, let's get ah, the, Danny DeVito yeah or the guy that <laughs> or the guy that vo- voiced Sonic in the new Sonic movie oh yes uh, Ben Schwartz um, I always call him John Ralphio I know I do uh, yeah, too ben- <laughs> oh man all right we're gonna wrap it up uh remember you can email the show if you want your question read uh at nintendo pal block at gmail.com oh my goodness i just thought of something i'm sorry what do you want ed what if they made a third person action gears of war style cut the end in the uh cut the end and you you have a squad of like mega man and like uh dude wow only if Mega Man was still voiced in the same way and said yeah. Mega everything beforehand. Where yeah. Mega travel, uh, Captain yeah. Man? Oh gosh! <laughs> I think I'm okay. exactly. You're like as old as I am. Yeah, man. What a wow! That was a that. With that, we are going to wrap the show. Thank you guys so much for listening and or watching the Nintendo Power Block. Remember, you can catch us live every week on Mixer and Twitch at Boss Rush Games Live. Uh, you can also download our podcast on your podcast service of choice. We are now on Anchor. Uh, we have made the switch over to Anchor successfully, and you can find us at more places than I even knew existed now So because Anchor distributes it everywhere you want it. So uh, you can download us on Spotify. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review really help us give us those five stars leave us a nice review it could help you win something in a few weeks for episode 200 uh just gonna throw that out there uh so you can also uh catch all of our content on bossrushgames.com uh mark why don't you remind us where you can find you again all right uh yeah i'm on uh Secret Friends Unite co-op mode every couple of weeks, but uh, subscribe there. There's there's new episodes of uh, either the proper show or our show up every week. It's uh, it's a it's a great time. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram at the underscore Canardian, and uh, I'm sure that'll be written somewhere in the show notes, so I don't have to spell it out here for you. So yep. thanks It'll for having a- me on, guys. This was a this was a blast. Yeah, you're you're welcome anytime, man. It's a it's always fun to talk to a fellow Nintendo nerd, as you say. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Ed, where can we where can we find you? You guys can find me at that retro code on Twitter, and you can find optional opinion on SoundCloud and other places, even on Anchor. Um, and check out Boss Rush Podcast here on BossRushGames.com and on our YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter, and, or yeah, on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me at Corey and HD on Mixer and Twitch. You can also find me on our Xbox show Arsenal X, and of course our flagship show boss rush podcast uh you can download those on your podcast service of choice as well you can subscribe to those shows at bossrushgamescom slash subscribe thank you guys so much for watching and or listening and until next time we love you bye everybody Woo-hoo.